Bacteria and moulds work unceasingly. Fungi proliferate, spreading their filaments through the litter. Within days of a leaf landing, they creep all over it, breaking down its tissues and returning the nutrients it contains back to the soil, where the roots of the trees, close to the surface, quickly reclaim them. And as the fungi themselves flourish, so they put up their spikes and umbrellas from which they spread their spores through the jungle. The most spectacular of all growths on the forest floor is not a fungus, but a parasite. To find it, you must first discover its host, a particular species of vine that grows in Sumatra. If the plant is infected, then a huge solid bud will periodically emerge from its roots. When it's swollen to the size of a cabbage, it slowly, over a period of four days, opens. Rafflesia. Its body is a network of filaments that run through the tissues of the vine, absorbing its sap. It has no stem or leaves of its own. The only time it becomes visible is when it puts out these monstrous flowers, the largest in the world. The petals are leathery and covered in raised, warty patches. It gives off a powerful smell which, to our noses, is revolting, for it's the stench of rotting flesh. The local name for it is Bunga Bankai, corpse flower. But that smell is irresistibly attractive to flies which feed on carrion, and they flock here. It's they that pollinate the flower. The seeds are small and probably carried through the jungle on the hooves of pig or deer that might tread on the flower inadvertently, and later elsewhere kick the bark of another trailing vine stem, and so infect that with another Rafflesia. The forest floor is littered with the debris of trees. Huge fallen trunks, branches ripped off by a storm, and leaves falling in a steady, gentle rain. It's here that the termites collect their food, removing it particle by particle and carrying it away for treatment in their nest. Their incessant labor, like the work of the fungi, is a crucial link in the life of the forest for the termites are bringing the nutrients in the wood back into circulation. Few other creatures can eat dead wood and leaves, but lots can eat termites. The workers are guarded by soldiers. This particular kind have nozzles on their heads from which they can squirt a sticky repellent. But they can do little against attacks from above. Spiders sling silken ropes across the marching columns and hanging from them, lasso the workers one at a time and haul them up to be eaten in mid-air. <laughs> 